Hey, this is A's Gallo. In this video, I'm going to be going over some post flop play after the cutoff opens and the button flat calls. We'll take a look at what PO Solver is doing and try and figure out why it's doing what it's doing and see if we can learn anything from that. So, for this setup, I have a starting pot of 65 chips and effective stacks of 975. Both players have the same betting structure, so they can bet 70% on the flop, 70% or 130 on the turn, and on the river they can bet 70 or 150%. Uh, and at each street they can raise to a size of half pot. So I think that in most games the, uh, the overbet sizings that I'm including here are not being utilized very often, probably not as much as we're going to see uh, in The Sims, but it's nice to include them because uh, not having the threat of them might, might make one player want to take some lines that uh, he wouldn't, uh, knowing the threat was there. Now it's probably a good idea if you're very confident that you're playing somebody who's never going to use these lines to not include them, but uh, if you're just unsure, I think it's a probably safer bet to go with this. And really, like, if you were playing some really tough fields, you might want to even try to include more bet sizes, uh, but for our purposes, I don't think we need them. Uh, the turn sizing, not having anything bigger than half pot. Uh, it's not that great. It, it sh really shouldn't change the way that flop play looks all that much. Uh, but I think that's also fairly standard uh, to see people not utilizing bigger sizings, uh, even for raises. For the cutoff player, we have the ability for C betting, but I did not allow him to donk the turn or the river. So if he calls on any street he is not allowed to lead out the next street uh, at equilibrium he will definitely be doing that uh, but it's going to be a pretty rare line and it's not going to change the EV of his strategy by very much uh, at least over all the different boards that I've looked at and I've talked to a few people about uh, and it also really just doesn't change the way that flop play looks there's a couple of combos that will take some slightly different frequencies, but overall, uh, the general frequencies you see will, will be the same, and, and it's going to look a lot the same. Uh, so good enough for our purposes here. I have an all-in threshold of 75% of the initial stack, meaning that if at any time a bet is going to have committed more than 75% of this 975-chip uh, pot, then players will just go all in at that point. Uh, and everything else is set as default. So for the cutoffs opening range, I gave him a 27% range. I, I think this is pretty standard. Uh, most regs are going to be playing pretty much like this, give or take a combo here or there, but overall it should be more than good enough. Uh, for the button, it was a little bit trickier. I tried to strike a little balance between what I think guys are doing and trying to include a little bit more uh, in these combos for for board coverage and also to just include the, the wider spectrum of possible player types that, that might be calling a little bit more. Um, it's not perfect. I, I threw the, these ranges together pretty quickly. I don't think they're anywhere near equilibrium play, but I think they're pretty good approximations of how two regulars are probably playing and should be more than good enough for our purposes here looking at flop play. And we can try and talk about how things might change if, if the ranges were composed a little bit differently too. So we're going to start here with a 294 rainbow board. I think the first thing that's going to be surprising to some people watching this, uh, and if you're not familiar, anything that's in green here, uh, this is the cutoffs range. Anything in green would be checked, and anything that would be red would be a bet, and we can see here that there's just not very many bets going on. Uh, I think 
this could be a little surprising to some people who are maybe betting a little too often in the spot. Uh, there's 2.9 combos being bet, but I think that if I were to run the uh, the sim a little bit longer, it would probably slowly get down to zero combos being bet. Uh, I just don't imagine that there's much reason for C betting. Uh, if we think about why that's the case, uh, it's a fairly dynamic board being nine high, meaning that there's going to be a lot of turn cards that are just going to really scramble up the equities of hands. Uh, you know, it, there's a bunch of over cards and there's over cards in both players' ranges. Uh, and a lot of those over cards also put out a lot of straight draws. So there's, there's going to be some pretty dynamic situations on a lot of turns as well. And the other thing to think about is that the cutoff doesn't have a lot of really uh, strong hands that are going to retain their equity over a lot of different boards. And he doesn't have a lot of uh, combos that are, you know, draws that retain a lot of equity right now. So anytime you split up your range by having a checking range and a betting range, you have a cost that's associated with that in making one of the ranges a little bit weaker. And this is just a spot where the cost of splitting our range is too great because we just don't have enough of those good quality type hands to be, uh, to be betting with here. So rather than punish ourselves by betting out, we just have a 100% checking range. And uh, I like it. I think that's pretty good strategy to have. So if we look now at the buttons range facing a check, you see a lot of indifference here. There's a lot of hands that have a lot of green and red going on. So to think about what's going on here, we need to remember that, especially on these dynamic boards, but in general, you want to have good coverage on a lot of different board types. And we see here like, good hands to have on a lot of different boards are probably going to be these uh, Broadway type hands that are either going to hit some really strong pairs or uh, hit some straight draws when uh, other high cards come because a lot of high cards are going to be coming out. And you see that uh, looking here, we can isolate the checking range and the betting range by clicking on these boxes. And those types of hands are in both ranges about half the time. Uh, so it seems pretty important to have there. Now, when we think about how this is really all playing out, it's important to remember that it's not just about the cards that you have. It's not about just your range. It's about your opponent's range and what he's doing. So to be able to try and get a sense for why certain hands are being better checked, we really need to consider the situation and look into what our opponent is doing and what his ranges look like. So we see here like a lot of folding with uh, Broadway offsuit cards, a lot of folding with these uh, two heart Broadway cards, and just a lot of folding with uh, you know 10 through King 8 and uh, these other King X hands. We see uh, these Ace X heart combos and even all of the uh, ace eight, seven, and six folding. So it's good to pay attention to those hands that are, are doing that and then look at which combos he is uh, raising. And it's gonna be like half of these uh, over pairs, half of his sets, uh, and a good amount of these nines. So like really keep track of each of these ranges and, and how our range is gonna interact with those. And the same thing is true of, of uh, if we're the cutoff and we're looking at this range, we need to think about our opponent's range and how he's going to be reacting to a raise from us and how, uh, how our calling range interacts with his on the most common and uh, important turns and rivers uh, to to look at like the the most common ones that are going to be very important here are going to i think be the uh the over cards uh mostly because those are the biggest threats to like 9x hands now and they're also gonna 
make up for a lot of straight draws and uh, top pairs on, on most turn and river runouts. So we have to pay close attention to that when we're thinking about why hands are being played the way that they're being played. So uh, let's start with like our 9-9, nine, nine, our 4s and our 2s for all of our sets. And we see that 4s and 2s are being raised very often. So like 4s and 2s, of course, want to get money in. Uh, when we have 4s and 2s and we, we bet out, we're going to be getting called by... Uh, a lot of these over pairs to, uh, to our fours or twos uh, that are under a nine, and we're going to be getting called by uh, a lot of these uh, over pairs and the nine X combos that the opponent has. And he's also going to be um, raising with a lot of those over pairs and the remaining nine X combos and these, uh, these Broadway hands again are, are being put a little bit in both ranges. Uh, so the, the reason that we bet them is it may have something to do with our model. The fact that we, uh, don't include bigger bet sizings for either player and we don't include anything bigger than uh, a half pot raise size. So we just might benefit so much by trying to get as much money as possible, uh, that we don't have like really any checks with these hands right now. And maybe if the cutoff could threaten us with really big raise sizes, we might start to call a little bit more, but I wouldn't be surprised if we were just always betting a lot of these because again, 9x is going to make up a decent chunk of his range and he's just going to have so many hands that 4s and 2s do not interact with uh, that will be continuing uh, and, and putting in a good bit of money uh, very far behind. When we get to our 9-9, nine -nine, we're checking it a little bit more often. So checking it, one, they're going to have less nines, and our set is also less vulnerable than our twos and fours. Uh, so we're we're more happy to uh, let cards uh, hit for free that might be folding. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. And uh, the other thing is like it does really well to protect our checking range. Now, when I say protect our checking range, I I don't mean that like we're gonna check nine nine because we want to just strengthen our checking range even though nine nine is better as a bet. What I mean is if we didn't have a hand like nine nine in our range, then our opponent might start betting uh, betting more often uh, to get us off of our then weaker range on turns and rivers because we just aren't including hands like this. This isn't the only combo that, that works like that. You see a lot of these over pairs are, are the same way. Uh, that's just how balance works. Uh, at equilibrium, it'll be the highest EV to mix our decision with nines here uh, because if we didn't, if we didn't have these really strong hands that we're sometimes checking, then our opponent would be able to like really attack our checking range. And the fact that he was doing that would make the EV of checking back these hands higher. So that's basically how balance works. Um, and nine, nine is better than fours or twos because it's a little less vulnerable, but more because it, it blocks our opponent having a nine anyways. So we, we get that added benefit of all these like two over cards that will be folding, potentially hitting a pair, uh, and paying us off then that, that won't be paying us off now. We're just getting called less or getting called or raised less often when we have nine, nine. Uh, <clears throat> so next let's take a look at these over pairs here. Uh, same thing there, uh, reason for why we're checking, but if you look like Queens and Jacks look like they're checking about 50% of the time, but if we look here at this window to the right, we can see that there are certain combos of Queens and Jacks that are checking or betting more often. And the combos that bet more often are the Queens with a heart. So it's really important to pay attention to 
the co the the hand combos that your hand is blocking, and sometimes it has uh, good blocking qualities, and sometimes it has bad blocking qualities. But it's always important to keep track of it. So when we have a queen of hearts here, looking at our opponent's range, let's look at the the queen of hearts that he has. And we see is like ace queen of hearts, king queen of hearts. These hands are all folding. Queen 10 of hearts, queen jack of hearts, queen 8 of hearts. But the other combos, like the uh, queen 10 plus with back doors, are continuing. So because of that, uh, it's better to bet with our queen with a heart because there's going to be those queen x combos that are just crushed by our queen queen uh, that are calling. Uh, the ones with the back doors, and we're not blocking as many of them. But when we have a hand like Queen of Spades, Queen of Diamonds, there's a lot less of those Queen X back door hands that are going to be calling, and there's a lot more of the Queen X of heart combos, which will be folding. So we figure to do better by checking when we block two back doors. The other uh, thing that's going on there is that our queen of spades, queen of diamonds is a lot less vulnerable than our uh, queen of hearts combos because we're we're blocking backdoor flush draws. So when a diamond comes out on the turn, there's going to be less rivers that fill in flushes, and there's also just going to be less flush draws on those turns. Uh, so you see this like the hearts are betting more often with uh, pretty much all of these pairs. It looks like, yep, uh, and that probably uh, even even down into the twos, it's probably still the case that you just prefer to bet more often when you're when you're blocking the heart and uh, not blocking the the two back doors. Uh, I'm not sure how much interaction there is with uh, twos that have a heart uh, in this guy's range. But the fact that uh, the fact when we have twos that have like a diamond and a club, uh, those are those are being checked a little more often because again, they just block the ability for the flush to come in. Uh, now, the like it's possible that if I ran this down to like a zero epsilon that the twos would just all always bet, but I think that it makes sense that uh, the EV of checking the 2-2 two -two with the two backdoor blockers uh, is going to be a little bit better than checking with the heart because of that, because it just blocks that uh, potential for the, you know, the whatever of uh, diamonds or spades to come out and uh, give a flush to somebody. So on turns, when they have flush draws, their flush draws are just that little bit weaker, and they're obviously going to be putting money in with those. Uh, next, let's look at like our 9x combos. Um, so we see this descending order uh, from betting more often with ace-9 down to betting a lot less often with 10-9, uh, almost not betting at all with the 10-9 of hearts. And then it spikes up around 9-8 suited, and the, the little bit of 9-7 that we have, uh, those are both betting uh, a lot of the time. So the, like, 10-9 through uh, king-9, I mean, when you have ace-9, king-9, queen-9, there's going to be more 9x combos that are dominated that will be continuing against you. So the, the hands that are going to be higher equity hands there are going to be more likely to want to play the bigger pots. Uh, but you're seeing this thing where like the 9-8 is betting a lot more than even the king-9 and the ace-9. So 9-8 benefits from the effect of getting two overs to fold a lot more than a hand like king-9 does. And king-9 has this benefit when it checks of all these king x combos that are folding to a raise uh, will still be in there. So 
it helps us on like king turns. We have a lot more equity on king turns now, and we're we're getting those king x combos, like those ace king offsuits that are folding, to put in a lot of money when they're very far behind uh, when we turn a river a king. So it would make sense that the EV of checking, uh, or not the EV, but just like we would have a higher preference to check a king nine than a nine eight. And like nine eight, when, when an eight comes on the turn, there's not gonna be that many eight combos in our opponent's range anyways. Uh, and like if we were to check back, and there's not gonna be as high a likelihood of them putting in a lot of money as say like a, a queen coming out when we have our, our queen nine and wanting to check that back a little bit more. Uh, for the like exact frequencies that are happening here, I mean, all of this has to do with the the two ranges and the bet sizings involved. So like if we included more, uh, I think a good example is like this ace-queen offsuit combo. You're seeing it check a lot. If we included more like ace-queen suited, king-queen suited, king-queen off, and ace-queen, like all of those combos, it's possible that we would see the frequency with which we bet all of these uh, ace queens change uh, because it would be easier to balance out our, or it would just be different to balance out our ace and queen combos since we would have more of them. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of this is just going to come down to the way that our range interacts exactly with our opponent's range. And when you think about deviating to exploit somebody, uh, you just have to think about how their range is changing from what we're seeing here. So for example, if uh, uh, thinking about that like King-9 hand, if we thought that all of those King-X combos were just going to be calling anyways, because we were playing somebody who liked to call with two overs, then the EV of uh, of checking it might not surpass the EV of betting because we're just going to be getting called that much more often. We would probably see a lot more hands uh, betting for value in that case. Uh, so yeah, important thing about that. I'm getting a little off track here. So let's move now to the, uh, the underpairs to the nine that we have here. So like we see the eight, seven, sixes, fives, and threes. Uh, gradually being bet more often. So if you were going to have to choose with these combos which ones to bet and which ones to check, uh, the eights and the sevens, uh, and really even the sixes, I mean, you know, the eights have more reason to check than than the, the sevens. They're just going to stay the best hand longer, and they kind of like to stay in the pot. Uh, when you get down to, like, your threes, threes aren't really going to stay the best pair uh, that often. Not only that, they have the, like threes and fives have the backdoor straight potentials. So with being not that strong of a pair, they also have uh, straight draws that they can pick up and they kind of help fill in the quota of uh, protecting those type of boards. Like making sure that our EV is higher on those type of runouts where uh, where those lower cards come out. And with our uh, eights and sevens, we just have higher EV now. And, you know, like our opponent can, can probably have some uh, 4X hands that we'll, we'll be able to... Uh, to extract value from later. And we could also like when we have eights, you know, let him hit a seven or a six. So, I mean, it, that's just good logic for why why eights would be more of a check. And I'm, I'm sure that's pretty obvious to most of you, but I'm just trying to go through all of these hands here. Um, next, moving down from our pairs, we'll look at our, our fours. So we have our ace four checking pretty often and our six four and five four betting more often. Uh, what I can see here is that the 6-4 and 5-4 have a uh, connection to a higher straight than the ace-4. And 
the uh, the ASEX that we have, we're, we're, we might be balancing out a little bit by better protecting um, ACE turns or ACE river uh, runouts with our ACE4 because we just have more reason to bet these like ACE5, ACE6, ACE7 combos than we do with our ACE4. So maybe the, the EV of betting ACE4s is, is really high, but because if we didn't have enough ace-x combos when aces ran out, we would be getting attacked more often on those boards, and therefore the EV of checking aces would go up, we would want to take the, uh, the aces that are going to do the best. And like ace-4 is going to do a lot better here than like an ace-5 or ace-6 is a check, uh, it's going to dominate the, uh, the other ace-x hands that might be folding. So like when we bet, uh, we bet our, our ace fives, we benefit a little bit from having some a six, seven and eight folding and some of these higher aces as well. Uh, our ace four really, uh, really, really likes having those ace X combos in there for the times that an ace does come out on the turn of the river. So again, it just, probably ends up being better because of the way that the ranges are structured and we just want to make sure that we have that coverage. When we look here at the ASEX that are betting, we're seeing most of these, you know, six, seven, eight, and nine combos. Uh, and like almost all of the, the ACE fives that are in the range there are betting. And, you know, those, those all benefit more than ace four uh, by having other ace x fold and just other random cards folding uh, as well uh, for those reasons. So now looking at uh, what's next, like ace jack and ace queen, uh, we talked about the ace queen a bit already. The ace jack here, we have the heart combos are uh, the two spade, or I'm sorry, the suited heart combos are betting more often, and the backdoor flush draws are checking more often. So, again, it's it's probably just uh, you know like filling in that quota for the most part. But if we think about why we would prefer to have our ace jack with no backdoors in our betting range here and the the suited ones in our checking range looking at our opponent's hands again we see like there's uh we can look at his diamond cards for example and all of these diamond combos would be folding um and we would like to keep those in the times that we that we uh you know hit a diamond on the turn it gives us uh, better coverage there for for when the board does run out that way, and we we keep in a lot more dominated diamonds, which is going to be a huge thing for for you know our ace x flush draws. Uh, ace jack also benefits from keeping in these like jack x combos that would be uh, pretty dominated, and these uh, ace x combos that would be pretty dominated if there was a, an ace or a jack coming out. Another way to think about this is that like we have this good reasoning behind checking these ace jacks with backdoor flush draws and then we have coverage for flush draws when we do bet because we have these like uh, ace eights and ace sevens and ace six uh, flush draw backdoors that are betting and a lot of other backdoor flush draws that are betting. So because those hands have such a good reason to be betting and because the ace jacks then have such a good reason to be checking, things work out well to balance there. And we still need to have ace and jack combos and ace jack combos for uh, for when boards run out where we need those. And then we have our ace jack of hearts betting in that instance. So it's really all about all the parts of the ranges tying in together uh, to, to come to this equilibrium. Uh, all right, so uh, moving on now. When we look at like ace 10, it's starting to 
check a bit more overall. Um, that probably, I mean, if I look really deeply into the ranges, I might be able to find something else. But for now, I'm just going to say that it, it probably has to do with, uh, with just, you know, filling in quotas, making sure that the ranges are well balanced. And uh, I'm sure there's a reason for it. It's just hard to dig in and find always. Uh, we get to like ace eight and it's betting a lot more. And again, like, you know, these uh, heart combo low aces benefit from getting the higher ace X that are going to fold folding. And, you know, they like your, your ace seven doesn't have that benefit that like uh, ace Jack when we're looking at like backdoor flush draws here. So ace Jack of diamonds and ace seven of diamonds, your ace seven doesn't really benefit from having sevens, stay in our opponent's range uh, and hit on turns because sevens aren't going to be that strong of a pair and there's not that many sevens in our opponent's range and when they come there's no reason to think that he's going to put in a whole lot of money with them. Uh, I think we already went over the, the Broadway cards that cover uh, good top pairs and straight draws so they're really important for both ranges. Uh, and I guess finally is these like uh, eight, seven, seven, six, six, five combos that are all being bet, and they probably you know like they they work well as bluffs. They have these backdoor straight potentials and backdoor flush draw potentials, uh, and they don't have much showdown value. But when we look at our opponent's range here and we think about the straights that we can pick up with these like eight sevens and seven six all of the combos that would really be dominating us or a lot of the combos that would really be dominating us uh, when we pick up those straight draws are going to be folding to a bet so the ev of our straights that we pick up on the turn are going to be much higher in spots where we've raised uh, the value of the straight draws are going to be much higher when we when we've raised because we're not going to run into being uh, straight dominated when we fill in and when we check back our opponent's going to have a lot of those type of hands that are going to have a straight dominated so that that's probably why these are uh, the higher preference to bet and maybe if we ran the sim longer they would get to uh, more of a bet you still might want to have the combos in there just because there's not very much coverage here uh, in in the button flat callers range for uh, lower straights running out so it's probably a good idea to have a couple of those combos in that checking range and the other thing going on there is that these hands don't have as good a showdown value and don't don't hit those uh, higher pairs. And I think maybe are going to be needed a little bit less often in a checking range just because of the, the straights and pairs that they represent hitting. Uh, so I think that probably covers all the, the hands here to talk about. I was hoping to go over uh, at least one more board, but it doesn't look like I'm going to have enough time to do that. Uh, for the next video, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll switch up the formats. Uh, if you guys want to see anything, just let me know. And I, I will make whatever video you like. Uh, for now, though, uh, that's, that's the method that I use to kind of try and get an intuition for what's going on and why PO Solver is doing the things that it does. Uh, and I, I look to that to try and figure out how to make exploits. So I can take a look and see like, well, if, if this player wasn't checking back these combos, what would that mean for his range? And what would that mean for like a specific turn and river runouts that I could attack a little bit more often? Or maybe that, uh, maybe he's, betting a little too often with certain hands where I can then know that on, on certain runouts, uh, his range is way stronger than, than the simulation here has. And I can know to make more exploitative folds. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you got something out of it. Uh, please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the next ones. Uh, until then, I'm Ace Gallo and I'll see you later.